My name is Jenya. I'm the founder of a company called Bean London. I mean, the more you learn about the ways we're all creating, the more you want to do something about it. And that was the, the, the start of the thought process. I thought, can you make a product entirely from what otherwise would call waste? Can we divert waste from going into landfill by turning it into something really cool and something that you and I would be using on a daily basis? Um, I got in touch with a number of recycling facilities in the UK, trying to understand what is preventing them actually from recycling things. Why is so much of what we use and then dispose of, or why is all of that ending up in landfill? And um, they all said, well, if you buy the materials of us, the recycled materials will recycle more. I was like, yes, I'll be that person. Um, very naively, <laughs> with no experience in product design or the fashion industry, I. I had my first prototype made entirely from waste. So the original bag, and we still have it, because um, it's one of the most popular designs. It's called Fields Tote, has lots of pockets, like super functional, large, kind of extra large tote. Um, the first prototype was made from recycled leather. So that's tannery offcuts, um, milled into a powder, pressed together into recycled leather. I mean, I can show you that material. So it looks like this. Waterproof, super functional, and like, it doesn't use any virgin leather. Um, the lining was um, recycled polyester. The zips were recycled polyester, so plastic bottles. And this is, you can see it in this example, for instance. Um, yeah, so this is how it all started. Our approach is quite simple. We only use materials that would otherwise end up in landfill. So only recycled materials, um, only certified recycled materials. So they have to have independent certification. So it's mostly um, global recycled standard. It's blue sign from Zips. I mean, it's all um, detailed on our website. Um, so that's kind of point number one. Materials have to be recycled. We don't use any virgin materials. And the reason for that being, I mean, multiple reasons, but um, also the fact that the carbon footprint of our products, because of those materials, is so much lower. It's actually 87% lower than anything you see on the high street. Um, I'm happy to talk about this forever, about this bit. <laughs> um, in terms of how things are made, um, they're made locally, they're made by um, people like you and me, they're made from, by Londoners, uh, very skilled artisans with you know, decades of experience. It's one of the last remaining leather workshops in East London and it's just, I mean, it's so important for us to try and save the, the skills that um, London used to have and we're desperately trying to keep everything, all our manufacturing in the UK and in London specifically. Um, we pay a London living wage. That's also very important for us as a, yeah, it's a it's a huge problem in the fashion industry that garment workers are so massively underpaid. So we, we want to do things differently on every front. I mean, even the way we cut um, our patterns. Uh, if you look at our styles, you can see that all panels are either rectangular or square. There's a reason for that. We don't want to be making more waste in the process of Diverting waste from landfill, if you know what I mean. And you can see the tiny offcuts you might have are just minuscule. Um, yeah, and we calculate our impact. We're quite geeky when it comes to our impact. We have so far diverted over 1.6 tons of waste from going into landfill. Um, we have planted over two acres of uh, rainforest in the Amazon. Um, the whole idea of trends and seasons in particular has always been um, difficult, I think, for, for us to come to terms with. I mean, following trends means, and doing seasons in the traditional way, means producing stock and putting everything left over on sale, and that just 
this doesn't sit right right with with how we operate so the way we design things is just timeless um we change our colors every now and again we obviously introduce new designs all the time but in terms of design the criteria is that it should stand the test of time it shouldn't be thrown away after six months because it's not trendy anymore like you will never see um, a bean london product that is so on trend but it's kind of out of out of fashion in a few months so we try to make really kind of timeless products We think about waste that we produce um, from the very beginning. So the, the moment we start designing a product, we think how are we, how are we going to design it in a way that we don't produce any more waste in the process. So all the panels are square or rectangular, so that we can fit them in a in a way that we have pretty much no waste in the process. And another exciting thing happening um, right now is we're starting to collaborate with major global brands, which I'm not yet allowed to talk to you about, um, who approach us to come up with solutions for their waste. And we're talking about luxury fashion brands that traditionally didn't like talking about their waste or dead stock. Um, these days they, they come to us to see what can be made from the offcuts that they've got, from the dead stock fabrics or leathers that they have. Um, so I think something is changing there, like from not even accepting the fact that there's waste and you've probably heard this horrendous stories about brands burning their stock at the end of the season. Um, so I hope that we can also become a solution for other brands' waste problem that they don't really like to talk about. Um, a lot of research. <laughs> Um, I try to go to every material innovation um, exhibition conference around the world to see who's doing anything interesting with waste. Um, I'm just signed up to every newsletter about waste and recycling and material innovation. And sometimes it would be just um, people in the industry going, oh, have you guys spoken to these people? And this is how we actually um started collaborating with one of the most yeah incredible um material innovation companies at the moment it's a company called biophilica we're working with them on um a home compostable product and it's a fantastic leather equivalent that is like yeah i'm just really excited about this so lots of research lots of reading lots of talking to people um and then you yeah and then you just give it a go i think we're often one of the first brands to try new materials and i want us to kind of remain one of the first brands to just go and yeah let's let's give it a go even though no one else has tried this before We, yes, we still work with the same small studio in East London that made our very first um, sample almost four years ago. They still make everything that you see on our website. Um, they're a lovely team, very, very skilled, um, very thorough in their approach. Just the quality is fantastic and um, yeah, we really love them. We know every maker our like our children have met each other you know like that close um i think it's quite different from um high street brands go shopping around and like oh we're gonna go to these guys to these guys i think we're quite loyal maybe yeah um and i think my dream really is what we've been talking about within our team is trying to create a hub for preserving the skills, the, the artisanal skills here in East London and maybe becoming one of those places that merges craftsmanship and innovation. Like this is a dream and we're making some steps toward that now. So we've, we've done this full life cycle analysis of our product, uh, which meant measuring every move we make as a company from the raw materials, so from the waste, from the source of waste, to how it's transported 
in between places, how it ends up here, how it ends up uh, at our workshop in Stratford, how is everything made to like electricity provider here and in the workshop. Um, having measured everything, we can now go to all our suppliers, both the material suppliers and the studio and say, hey guys, we've measured everything. What you're doing is really great, but there's one little thing that you can improve change your electricity supply or you could insulate your windows a little bit better you know we can actually go and talk to everyone we work with and help them do better um, and you can't really have those conversations without measuring everything so we really when we design stuff we think about the end of life like we have to think about what happens to that bag when it's, you know, served its purpose for many, many years. So the way it works, we don't really glue things together, which allows for very easy um, way of taking it apart. So this felt, which is actually fascinating, so that's corporate uniforms uh, from IKEA, MKLM, Heineken, I think, quite a few Dutch companies that uh, send us their uniforms. You can take all of this apart, take it into pieces, and then we can send it back to the manufacturers to recycle it further. I mean, the fact that the whole industry is moving in the right direction is really exciting. Um, what I personally find the most exciting movement um, is people starting to think about post-waste. How can we make products that don't create any waste, right? Like we're, we're picking up a lot of the leftovers of the fashion industry that just nobody wants to think about. And like, how can we clean up um, the, the industry? But there's thinking about post waste. How can we make products that are, that don't leave any waste at all? And I'm talking about this in particular, it's the, the project we're working on with Biophilica. Um, it's a pilot supported by the Mayor of London and the Re London Circular Economy Initiative. We're creating a bag that would be home compostable. You don't need to recycle it. It just, it will disintegrate into soil without leaving any trace. And just imagine if everything the fashion industry creates could be compostable. Surviving the pandemic was one of them for sure. <laughs> As an independent brand, I mean that. Uh, I feel that's definitely a success. Um, collaborating with some incredible brands. There's some collaborations in the pipeline that are, yeah, really, I can call them a success even before they happened. Probably prematurely, but hey. <laughs> and I mean, one of the highlights of, of last year was uh, British Vogue naming Bean London one of the most innovative fashion businesses in the world, which considering our size is pretty remarkable. <laughs> we still pinch ourselves and go, okay, yes. <laughs> yeah, so that was definitely a success and we just want to continue doing what we do, staying at the forefront of innovation in fashion. Yeah, 100%. There's both in terms of industry conversations happening around sustainability and in terms of um, just general public awareness of supply chain issues and innovation happening there. I think we're definitely seeing some, yeah, a lot of progress for sure. I mean, the fact that um, more and more people buy our product is a sign of, of that for sure. Uh, but also the conversations that were happening at sustainability conferences two years ago are now transforming into kind of action on the ground. So brands are really changing the way they work. And I think that's really exciting. And I'm just very hopeful and very optimistic about what's happening.